Orchids for me are beauty, resilience, and peace. There is a big relation in my life between the orchids and what I do every day to what gives me peace and gives me joy in life. These are amazing plants. These are very resilient plants. Orchids not only are the second largest plant family in the planet, but also these are plants that have been here, many of them since times of the dinosaurs, and people don't realize that. These are plants that have survived through ice age. They have survived and adapted to absolutely every environment. Orchids grow in every continent except in Antarctica. Starting in the morning, the first thing that I generally do after having my cafe con leche, which is basically my gasoline to start my day, is to walk through the greenhouse uh, when everything is quiet and check the plants that need watering, uh, check individually some group of plants to make sure that they don't have any problems that have arisen in the last few days of insects, fungus, bacteria so that then we can make a plan of attack to those plants. I grew up in a family that always had a passion for plants. Um, I was very lucky, uh, not only that I grew up in Cuba where plants were all around me, beautiful vegetation, but my father was president of the National Association of Farmers. And what that did for me was that usually on the weekends when I was off from school, my father would take me to visit farmers all around. So I started getting interested in how plants grew on the flora and fauna of Cuba but I really had no knowledge whatsoever about orchids. I always thought that all orchids were purple and uh, I did not discover really what my future was gonna be related to orchids until I arrived to this country. I am one of those people that Castro uh, free from the jails in Cuba. I was 18 years old and I was arrested with a group of friends trying to enter the Peruvian embassy in Havana, which is what prompted the Maria Bow lift in 1980. I always thought and most people that knew me believed that my future was going to be as a writer. I always had a passion for writing. I obtained national prizes for literature, but that is the old saying, man proposed and God disposed. And uh, I met someone that had orchids as a hobby. I was invited to go to an orchid show in Fort Lauderdale. Generally, when you go to an orchid show, when you attend the show, you get a little raffle ticket. And every hour on the hour, they call a winner. Well, voila, who won? I did. And so this way, I started getting more inquisitive about this plant. When people ask me, how do you start this business? I always tell them a hobby that went out of control. I started attending orchid clubs and meetings. I spoke not a word of English. So for me, it was like not understanding the lectures, what people were talking about, but I was exposed to different varieties of orchids. I started discovering what made this plant better than this other plant. And from these people, I started to learn how to have radice, how to select plants for breeding, how to learn about the uh, genealogy of plants. Now, you got to remember, this is 1981, 82, 83. There was no Google. There was no information. There was no internet. Going through this book, it brings a lot of memories. I haven't seen this in 30 years. 
This is my first book of hybridizing. This is the first hybrid I ever made, and it was done on March 4th of 1983. In the early days, I used to make a, a cross, and I would write a description of what I was expecting. And a lot of times I was surprised. Sometimes it was better than I was hoping, and many occasions it wasn't as nice as I was hoping. But it was a form for me to practice and to learn. In 1987, uh, we were able to purchase a property in the Redlands, two and a half acres of plants, where we started building the nursery. Everything was going great until 1992, Hurricane Andrew came and destroyed both the house and the nursery. So from there, we had to start from scratch again. When the nursery was destroyed, it was really up to us to rebuild. And it took about two months for us to be able to get our mail. We were on the north side of the hurricane. And when I got the mail in a big box two months after everything that has been collected, I remember that I was parked right outside the post office. And I started going through the mail and it was really the first time that I really cried after the hurricane. I started opening mails and it was all of these letters from customers sending $25 check, $50 check. One customer sent a $1,000 check and it was all beautiful notes, how much they wanted to help us to get back in our feet. People sometimes ask me, Jose, what are you gonna do? Because eventually one day, you gotta move on. And that's really something that I don't even wanna think about it because I don't know what else will I do if it's not growing these plants, hybridizing these plants. Right now, what I'm concentrating is in creating new varieties of orchids. That is going to be my legacy as a hybridizer. For me, it's a way of continue to live. It is like the book that I haven't written. It is like the painting that I haven't created. This is what I'm leaving behind for generations of people that are going to be growing these things uh, one day in the future. <laughs>